Hold on, she's not here.
purchase them. You can take them home. And the list, if you've forgotten what you ordered, the list is right here. And of course, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper today. Let's start with some prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day, a gathering to be with you. <coughs> and a special remembrance of how this all started with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for that. We pray that your Holy Spirit fills this place and fills our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
as we'll hear today, the Holy Spirit uh, functions in our lives in so many ways. One of those ways is convicting us of sin. Some of you might have seen this message along the way. When you feel condemned by sin, that's Satan. When you feel condemned, when you think, I'm worthless, I'm not redeemable, I'm a terrible person, that's Satan. Conviction by the Holy Spirit is different. Conviction says, I've fallen short. Because of my sin, and I can name them, because of my sin, I need God's grace. You see the difference? Condemnation, say conviction, which leads us to repent, which leads us to open ourselves to God's grace and receive it, that's the Holy Spirit. We have to turn to that. Let's ask for, for forgiveness together in prayer. Or we do feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it stings. Because it's truth. Because we have sinned. We are sinners. We know it from your word, and we feel it with the Holy Spirit. And we're sorry. Lord, help us to have the courage to acknowledge that we're sinners. Pride gets in our way, Lord. You know it. You know it so well. We know it. But let the Holy Spirit cut through our pride. So often our pride manifests, Lord, in self-sufficiency and self-righteousness. We're good enough. We're not. So often our pride says, I don't need to be in community with other people. We do. And pride says, I don't need God. I've got everything I need. Wrong. We're sorry, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit melt, dissolve, wipe away this dangerous, destructive pride that we have. Forgive us these and our other sins this morning. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take some time to reflect on how pride cuts us off from God and others. Amen. Sin, pride, sin, leads to death. Sometimes it can be an immediate death, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's a, over a lifetime. It's a slow death. Sometimes painful. But the Holy Spirit intervenes. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Without Jesus, our end is death, not just the physical, but the spiritual. Let's say these words together. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen.
Amen. And invite the children forward for a message.
she's actually in Virginia on an astrophysics tour But she's going to college. I didn't play this year. I played the last year. Pour out my spirit, pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
On your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall preach. And I will show the portents in the heaven above, and the signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and smoky mist, and the sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord, Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter preaches, and 3,000 people repent and become Christians that day. And they devote themselves to the teaching and the prayer and the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. There was a moment in my life, a very transitional moment, and like for many of you, a very important song came along right at that time. I still remember it, I won't sing it anymore. But it was around the 1988 Olympics, and it was Whitney Houston's song, One Moment in Time. And the song was, Give Me One Moment in Time, where I thought, I, where I became more than I thought I could be. And um, still remember that song. And that's very much like what happens to Peter in particular today in this passage. Peter, we know, was very, we call him kind of hot and cold. One minute he's saying, you're the Messiah, that he's betraying him. One minute he's walking on water, that he's sinking. Peter's very much like us. I think that's why a lot of people identify with him. Then at the last at the last, with Jesus, Jesus says, you're forgiven. Feed my sheep, be the rock of the church. And so Peter goes from this very ordinary guy to leading a movement. And people standing there, as you heard some of the responses, and I'm so glad that they're in there. Some people are bewildered. Some people are saying, what does this mean after they witness what happened? I'm sure there were some people there who might have known Peter, and they would have looked at him and said, well, where is this coming from? How does this guy go from this some guy to converting 3,000 people to believing in Christ? How does that happen? Answer, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The operating, the key phrase in this passage is when the Holy Spirit comes, like the rush of a violent wind, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I know when I say that, a lot of you think that's some kind of mystical you know, thing where you walk around and you are on fire and all these, all these images that you may think. I'm sure it scares many people to hear the phrase, to even explore and think about the phrase filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not in control. You may not be yourself anymore. All the things we kind of hold on to and kind of, we think, anchor us, go away if you're filled with the Holy Spirit. But I want you to see this morning all the amazing things that are possible when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And why it's so essential for us as Christians and as a church. The main thing is that yes, as you might suspect, when the Holy Spirit is present or filling, there's transformation. And like it or not, I can put all sorts of, I heard a message this week that said, don't call it change, call it experimenting. Then people will feel better about it. <laughs> um, that, might, that might work, that seems a little manipulative. But being in this room, when you come to this sanctuary, <coughs> it means on some level you signed up for change or growth. Could be over time, could be a lightning bolt, but that's what we sign up for. 
We call this a sanctuary. You know other sanctuaries, right? With plants and things in there. Sanctuaries where people are safe. But the ones where we put plants and things, what happens? Growth, right? We put plants and stuff out in the elements. They're, they're vulnerable to various other forces. But when we put them in a sanctuary, they grow like crazy. That's this place. And the power to grow is the Holy Spirit. I want to focus on this passage and I want you to see all the amazing things that happen, all the transformations that happen because of the Holy Spirit. Start with Peter. Peter, using his natural talents, might have been a nice guy, could have done some amazing things, maybe he talked to some people about Jesus, but he goes from natural to, in fact, everybody goes from natural to supernatural. Natural, I, you know, I have some wisdom, I have some gifts, and I have some talents, but that's flesh. Supernatural is, this guy never preached a sermon before. And he comes out with this message. And people hear it, and they're changed for it. That's supernatural. That's the Holy Spirit. So we go from natural to supernatural. You think of this in church terms. A lot of churches just live in the natural. Whether it's personalities, agendas, and all those <coughs> things. Whether good or bad, healthy or helpful. They're still just natural. But when we say, come Holy Spirit, into our lives and into this church, then supernatural things start happening. And I'm pleased to tell you, I see some of that stuff here. When we're walking in the parade, a number of the people in our parade group were being moved by the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me hand out this flower to somebody. Let me reach out to somebody. People who are normally pretty reserved and shy were doing that. That, to me, was the Holy Spirit. I talked about that. So it can happen. Let's talk about some more transitions or transformations. Just before they come, just before the Holy Spirit comes, what does it say? They're sitting in a room. Just before that, the Holy Spirit, if you look in the Old Testament, only came upon certain people, prophets and other people. Then the Holy Spirit comes, and it goes from exclusive, a bunch of people in a room, or some special people from the Old Testament, into everybody. He even quotes Joel chapter 2 and says, the Lord says, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Not just special people, not just the people that show up, but all people. The Holy Spirit has become democratized. It's for everybody now. For you and for me. Likewise, this place should not be exclusive then. It's for everyone. Everyone who wants to call on the name of Jesus. We go from exclusive, which is a natural human thing. I just want to be with the people I like. I just want to be comfortable inclusive, which takes patience and strength and Holy Spirit power. There are a lot here. That's why I'm looking at the list here. But we'll go quicker. One of the main things that happens on this day is they start communicating. This is what people they were hiding in a room. Right? Now they're telling the whole world about God's deeds of power back in the passage. How do you go from help us to let me tell you about God's deeds of, deeds of power, and let me be enabled by the Holy Spirit to speak in your language. Holy Spirit. Okay? Go from kind of shy and reserved and quiet to telling everybody about God. Now, you've probably thought about that. You've probably thought, I, I want to evangelize. I want to talk to some people at work about God. And you've tried it on your own, going back to the first one, natural. Of course, it's not going to go very well. You ask the Holy Spirit's help. Watch what words show up. Okay? And about the languages, we've talked about this before. You don't have to know how to speak to people in Mesopotamia and Crete and all those other places listen, listed in there. But you do, know how, you do have to know how to speak to people all around you. Learn the language of speaking to people who are grieving. Learn the language of people who are struggling financially. It's English. I give you that. 
but a lot of the work that I do in my personal outreach is translated. How do I translate what I believe into a way with integrity and with faithfulness into a language that somebody who's never gone to church before can understand? I ask for the Holy Spirit's power. You can too. <clears throat> Another main thing that happens here is boldness. Peter stands up. He's accused that all his friends are accused of being drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. He says with boldness. And he gives this message. Before that, they weren't taking a lot of risks. Right? We have to be that too. The Holy Spirit enables us to take risks, to be bold. Not to be wallpapered, to be scared. Just a couple more, real quick. They go from a group, a group of people that, hey, they knew Jesus, to a movement in just a few minutes. After that message from Peter, they went from a group of 12 to 3,000 in an hour. That's power. That's Holy Spirit math. We try natural math. We say, well, I hope somebody shows up today. Hope one person shows up today. Come on. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit's power. See how many people show up. Or see how many people we go out and tell God about. Tell them about God. <clears throat> Two more. They have impact. When you hear the message, when the people in that, we didn't read that part, that's further on. But when the people heard the message of who Jesus Christ was, raised from the dead, Son of God, you know what the response is? They say, it says in, in Acts chapter 2, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter, what shall we do? And he says, repent and be baptized. That's impact. Before, there were a bunch of fishermen and hanging out with Jesus, and certainly Jesus had the impact but now on their own. Whether it's their testimonies, Peter's message, people were cut to the heart. Now, that's not supposed to be a, that's not a, it's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. When you hear a sermon, when you hear a message, whether on the radio here, you read the Bible, and you feel that, that in your gut kind of reaction, like, oh, that's me, or yes, I should do that, or whatever it is, that's cut to the heart. That's the Holy Spirit working. And then we say, what should I do? Be bold. Have an impact for Christ. Last one. They have unity. We think, when we come to church, hey, I've known this person for 20 years, we're good friends, we don't. That's all nice. That's natural, though. They become a movement. They become a unified group of people. Why? Because the focus of their connection is Christ and the Holy Spirit. That's how you have unity. That's how you change the world. That's how you impact your community. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the question of Pentecost, these 2,000 years later, is, we talk a lot, we talk a lot about being church. We want to be a good church. We talk about maybe even, like I said at the beginning, the song, I want to want to be more than we thought we could be. A lot of times for, for those of us sitting here, we think, well, we hope some more people show up, but maybe there's more money. Forget that. We need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We talk about our vision being a house of prayer. Absolutely. But the first prayer we need to pray is not necessarily for someone or someone here. First prayer Every morning, every week, we need to pray as Holy Spirit, fill us and fill this place. This world is in tatters and pieces. There are people in this community who might go to hell today because we didn't reach them. Why? Because we're not relying on the Holy Spirit. It's not enough to be nice people. That's another group. That's fine. We're here to be people of the Holy Spirit, to be people of Christ. And for the world's sake, and for this community's sake, 
for our own sake, we need to start acting like people of the Holy Spirit and relying on the Holy Spirit. So yes, it would be nice to it's nice to sing about the Holy Spirit. It's nice to maybe say words in different languages. But let's just be people of the Holy Spirit. And let's start asking for supernatural power, not just our own personalities and qualities and things like that. The world's waiting. Community's waiting. And our choice is to sit here with ourselves and be nice and, and have some good times. Or we can be on a mission. We can be a part of the movement of Christ in this world. That's our question today. Will we? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I come here every Sunday. Praying the Holy Spirit to fill this room. And this morning, I'm praying for whatever obstacles are in the way. Whether it's for our fellowship, for the teaching, for worship, for our ministries, for our outreach, whatever obstacles are in the way, for our own spiritual walks with Christ. I'm asking you to remove and tear down those obstacles so the Holy Spirit can flow freely in here and overflow out beyond. I ask that with heart and soul. We ask that through the example of this message, this passage this morning, the story of Pentecost. We will go, Lord, if you lead us. We will hold your people in our hearts. Here we are. Take time to give God an offering, a part of ourselves. Sometimes it's a check. Sometimes it's serving. Sometimes it's singing a little louder. Sometimes it's taking a message to heart and saying, God, do it. All of those are offerings. These offerings, we take them, we put them together, and we further reveal God's kingdom. Let's receive that.
gifts in place in our lives. Sometimes we're more aware of them than others, but this morning when we gather together, we think about the gift of being creative, the gift of being alive, the gift of being saved through the blood of Jesus, the gift of being part of a church, and many, many more. We ask for your blessing. We lift these up to you, and they be used wisely for impact on this community and world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. There's another part to the story of Acts, and that was, and it's a very important one, and that is, with Jesus, they were kind of along for the ride, and that was part of the design. And sometimes we do that, too, we're just kind of along for the ride, but... Then they became passionate and devoted. The Holy Spirit intervenes. I don't know about other faiths or things like that, but being a Christian is a passionate pursuit. It's not for sleepwalking. It's not for uh, just being along for the ride. There's a passion where we recognize we're saved by the cross and by the blood of Jesus, that we have the same power in us that raised Jesus from the dead. And that we are positioned and empowered to teach and heal and feed and comfort. Passion. Turn to the Lord's Supper. Let's read this responsibly. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Supper which we are about to celebrate is a feast of remembrance, of communion, and of hope. We come in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ was sent to the world to assume our flesh and life, to fulfill for us all the needs of the divine law, even to the bitter and shameful death on the cross. By his death, resurrection, and ascension, Christ established a new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation that we might be accepted of God and never be forsaken. For nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ. We come to have communion with the same Christ, who has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. In the breaking of the bread, Christ makes himself known to us as the true heavenly bread that strengthens us to life eternal. In the cup of blessing, Christ comes to us as the vine, in whom we must abide if we are to bear fruit. We come to celebrate our hope, believing that this bread and this cup are just a pledge and foretaste of the feast of love of which we shall partake when God's kingdom has fully come, when, with unveiled face, we shall behold Christ, made like Christ in his glory. Like Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we have received life-giving spirit and body. Therefore, we receive this supper of true Christian love, mindful of the communion of saints. We invite all those who profess their faith, faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, to this table. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise to God. It is right and good and is a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O Lord, our Creator, Almighty and Everlasting God. You created the end of all the stars and the earth of all the heavens. You created us in your image. Breathe into us with oil. You sustain us by your providence. When we turned away from you and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When we broke your covenant, you acted to establish a new and everlasting covenant through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. You sent into the world through your eternal word. You came to this place, our Lord. You became a human being for us, for our salvation, for the precious gift of the Son of the Savior. Let's reconcile us to you. We praise and bless you, O God. And with your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we lift our hearts in joyful praise, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth filled with your glory, their hosannas gladly cry. Blessed is the one that cometh in your name, O Lord Most High. Holy are you, O God, blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in fulfillment of Christ's promise, we poured out the Holy Spirit upon the chosen disciples and filled the church with power. By the Spirit's power, the gospel of salvation was 
proclaimed in many languages. Many people were brought to faith, and the church grew. We thank you for sending your spirit to us today to kindle and rekindle faith and teach the truth of your son, Jesus. Your spirit that work in us today to make us faithful disciples and empower us to proclaim the living Christ to every person and every nation. The spirit unites us with one another to Christ. Holy and righteous God, as we commemorate in this supper that once and perfect sacrifice offered on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world, we proclaim the mystery of our Christian faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. In the joy of his resurrection, in an expectation of his coming again, we offer to you ourselves as holy and living sacrifices. By the presence of your Holy Spirit, may the bread the broken be to us the communion of the body of Christ. May the cup which is blessed be to us the communion of his blood. Grant that being joined together in Christ, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into him who is the head. In Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. He said, Eat this in remembrance of me. This is my body that's broken. <coughs>
Remember as we break this communion with the body of Christ. After they had eaten, he took the cup and gave thanks again. And he said, This is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me.
thanksgiving, first communion song. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is the Lord's steadfast love toward those who are faithful. As far as the east is from the west, so far the Lord removes our transgressions from us. As the Father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to the faithful. Yes. So the Lord, O oh God, for this minion, so the Lord, O oh my soul. take a brief time for uh, prayer requests, joys and concerns, celebrations. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much. You are so good. We give you thanks for all that you do in our lives. We want to give thanks for a number of recoveries. Continue to pray for Jack. But we give thanks for Tony's procedure. We give thanks for uh, Aunt Faye and her recovery. Thanks for Mary's recovery. Watch we'll over her and Emma as well, Lord be with, and the richest friend Charlie during this time of grieving. And uh, Lord, so many things going on in our lives. We're so busy, but we take time to thank you. We take time to turn to you. We ask, again, for the Holy Spirit power to be a united body of Christ, and to be uh, an ambassador for you wherever we go. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Close our worship on this Pentecost with the Spirit of the Living God.
Holy Spirit, we're fearless, we're compassionate, we're focused on Christ, we're reaching people, we're impacting the world, all available to us through the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen.